Good morning, everybody. Virtual presentation Friday coming to you. Uh, kicking off August. Can't believe we are in August. My goodness gracious. So for those of you that don't know me uh, personally or in any facet, my name is Micah Hunt. I work for Garrett Realty Partners here in Hampton Roads, Virginia, on the eastern side of Virginia. And we started putting these uh, presentations together to kind of keep us connected, networking, and still learning about things that are going on in our industry as a whole. I'm excited to say that this, con this uh, meeting has gone nationally very quickly and even internationally. We have some people on the call from Canada um, as well. So it is exciting to see that many people coming together to better assist our seniors and our community. Um, so it's always good to see so many familiar faces and new faces. Um, so thank you all for joining us. And today's presentation is by Jeff Bird, which I'm excited to have him joining us today. And he's gonna be talking about busting the cyclone. And those of us that were on the East Coast, we actually had a cyclone hit us Monday night, Tuesday, early morning. So it's kind of a fun segue that that kind of met, mended together. And uh, he's gonna be talking about um, disrupting the pattern of negative energy. So Jeff, I'm gonna let you go. For those of you that are listening, if you can use the speaker view, so that way you just have Jeff um, on their screen because he's not sharing anything. So that way we don't have any, um, you don't have to worry about seeing all of us together if you want to. Um, again, just a quick reminder, if you have one name on your uh, screen, please chat your last name so I can make sure I get your email. Jeff, I am muting myself now and it is all yours. All right. Well, thank you so much, Micah. Appreciate that. And appreciate what you're doing here. And happy Friday again, everybody. Uh, if you're like me, you're, uh, you're pretty pleased that we finally got to Friday, right? Uh, and I know you are too, Micah, right? So um, uh, thanks for jumping on. Uh, and what we want to talk, to talk about today is just how to bust up that cyclone of, of the negative energy. Um, as you know, we've been having a, a challenging year. I won't say a bad year because some good things are coming out of it, but it's definitely been a challenging year for a lot of us. Uh, and out of that, you probably noticed there's uh, been some fairly negative energy coming from different sources. Maybe if you're like me, yourself at times, uh, or other people that you live with or that you know. So uh, today, what we're gonna uh, what we're gonna try to do is put in some thinking that can help bust up that uh, that negative energy. Uh, put in some good things and. Uh, as I was thinking about this, I was out on my walk this morning, and, uh, and I remembered uh, uh, years ago, seems like many lifetimes ago now, I was working at Pizza Hut, and uh, I worked with a guy named Mark, and every time Mark would come in, he was, he was this small Italian guy, and he, he would come in, and he would, he would be like, hey, did you hear about blah, 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 and he would tell us the latest negative, difficult, tragic news that he could, had found. And it's like, good heavens, does this guy do anything but listen to bad news? And uh, we, we came to the conclusion that no, he didn't. Uh, he, just, he must have just had, had the, the radio on all the time in his car and then popped on the TV when he got home. And uh, I remember one time he was in an, uh, he was in an accident and uh, it, he got the front fender of his car knocked off. And uh, we looked out, the, we had a big plate glass window in the front of the building. We, we were looking out across the lot and here comes Mark and he wasn't a real tall guy. He was maybe, I don't know, five, four or something. And here he comes dragging the fender with him that was bigger than he was <laughs> to come in and give us a show and tell about this accident he had. And um, uh, a, a coworker was standing next to me and we saw him coming across and he goes, oh my, here comes Mark with a doom flash. <laughs> And we thought, now, and you know what it's like to be around people, uh, uh, doom flash people, right? And, and you know who they are, and, and I'm sure you've got some images popping into your mind, right? They're just a doom flash person. And uh, now none of us, I know because we're on this call, none of us want to be doom flash people. And um, here's some, uh, uh, we're going to talk about some ways to break that up. And uh, the first thing, uh, this kind of relates back to Mark, uh, the guy from Pizza Hut, you know, and it's, I realized that this negative energy is cyclical. And I realized this very clearly back a couple of months ago as I was, was thinking into uh, uh, what we've been experiencing this year. And I thought, you know, this is cyclical. And uh, actually, one, one of my friends, uh, uh, I won't call her out, but I think she might be on the call. Uh, she told me, she said, wow, she said, I had been listening. I realized I was listening to four hours of news a day. And I'm like, wow, good. How, how do you have room for any good news in your brain? 
you know, because what happens, and, and here's the cyclone, it's just like Micah said, the cyclone, hurricanes, tornadoes, all of those are cyclical. And if they get moving fast enough with enough energy, they're extremely destructive, right? And um, it was, it was, some of us have had, had some, we had some, a little bit of minor damage and a lot of limbs down. And uh, a lot of people have had a lot more than that, just from, from what we got the other day. And it was nowhere near like a category five, just a tropical storm coming through. But these cycles, they can cause a lot of destruction. And the, the obvious way that came to my mind that these cycles work is we watch or listen to difficult news, right? And we take in these difficult things and a lot of them appear and are, some of them, negative. And then we think on them, right? So, so we take it in, then we think on it, then we start feeling that way, right? And, 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 you, and you, you know those news channels, they never miss, miss an opportunity to play a difficult story over and over and over and over and over. And after a while, you think, oh my gosh, you start feeling like, oh my gosh, all, all that ever happens is difficult stuff, negative things. Well, I could do a whole network on positive things, but, but this is kind of what we tend to see, right? And then when we start feeling that way, then when we, see, when we meet the next person, what do we talk about? We talk about the difficult stuff that we're thinking about and feeling and taking in, just like Mark. You know, we end up, we end up without, without even knowing it sometimes, just being a doom flash person, right? It's like, oh my, you know, it's, it's like those people that, that the sky's always falling, it's going to be so bad when it does, and it's going to be so heavy to put back up, right? It's, uh, we can easily get that way if we have enough negative input. Um, and, and we become like these little mini bad news reporters, you know? We, we take in this and then we, we give it back out you know, in a little, in our little small community as well. But, you know, you know, think, think about COVID for a second. Uh, not that we need any more thoughts about that, but the, the, one, the one thing I've learned about COVID is that it started in a very small area with just a few people. Uh, I, was, I was watching one video, I don't know if this is true or not, but it said that it started at a restaurant and uh, there, there was an, uh, some, some HVAC or something blowing across this one person and the person on the other side of the table caught it. It was in the line of the air. And then the people behind them got it. And then it, but in, think about this, just in a few months, this little contact spread around the world. So if, if a difficult thing can have that impact, how much more a positive thing and a good thinking, if we can, if we can be that contagious with those things. So that, that's kind of the goal. Um, but sometimes when we, when we take these things in, it reminds me of what Mother Teresa said. Uh, she said one time, she said, if I ever stopped and looked at all the need around me, it would, it, it, it would immobilize me, it would paralyze me, and I would get nothing done. I'd be overwhelmed. She said, all I can do is look at the, the next thing in front, the next child, the next task in front of me, and use whatever resources I have to do that. And then when I'm done with that, do the next one, and then the next one. She didn't try to solve the whole world at one time, but she did solve a whole lot of issues over a lifetime of doing one thing at a time. And, and it leads us to ask when we see all of this difficulty, uh, you know, in so many lives around us and even personal lives, even Facebook, if you're like me, uh, you know, good people, great people, great friends, but boy, going through some rough times. Uh, my wife and I, uh, she's on the call here. Uh, well, we've had a rough time this year. We've lost in, in three months, just a little over three months, we lost five family members and our very close friend who did the toast at our wedding. None of them due to COVID, but I, and, and my mom was included too. So, you know, it can be, it can be a tough season. Um, and, and we feel like, wow, uh, you know, what can I do? You know, and sometimes it feels like, wow, I can't do anything. And the more we hear big, big difficult things, the more we feel like, oh my, well, who am I to do anything about this? What can I do? Well, we're gonna talk about that a little bit. The first thing we can do is to realize that what we take in it's gonna be pretty much the equivalent of what we give out, right? Input equals output. And uh, somebody said one time, and I love this quote, they said, what we behold, we become. What we behold, we become. And that really begets the question, what are you beholding on a daily basis? What are you putting right in front of your vision and your face? What are you looking at? What are you listening to? Because uh, as, as another person said, we are rapidly becoming who we are going to be. Say that one again, we're rapidly becoming who we're going to be. And who we're be what we're becoming and going to be is dependent on 
what we're taking in. It's true on the physical level with what we eat, with what we do. It's true on the emotional level, mental level, spiritual level. We're all of those things. And what we're putting in on any of those levels is determining what we're going to be. And if, if our input leads to you know, a negativity, a bleak outlook, despair, depression, not only are we not going to reach our own potential, but we're also going to influence the people around us. We're gonna be leaders because leadership is influence, but we're gonna be leading in a very negative way and, and, and spreading some difficulty. We're gonna be those doom flash people. Um, the other thing is, is uh, I wanna talk about is, is the messages that are contained in what we put in. Um, this is a, a very important topic to me. I actually wrote a book about it that was launched this year called Who Says So? <laughs> you know, and maybe that's a good thing to ask in the news or when people bring difficult things is who says so? And especially about the messages because those things, even though they're not evident up front, they have personal implications, right? Uh, it can be the implication that you can't do anything about this. You know, things are just so big and bad and out of control. You might as well just not j just succumb to it and just be depressed and, and uh, not, not try to make a difference, not, not do the things in your power. You may not even see that there are any things in your power. So what we believe in those messages that come to us, they often are not even realized. Like, for example, if you're, if you're driving on the interstate and somebody cuts you off, right? Well, that's annoying. Uh, there's a number of ways we can respond. You might make a gesture to them, perhaps, or uh, you might have a few choice words to mutter under your breath, or maybe shout them out the window. Uh, it, but sometimes if that happens, what did they just, what message did they just give you? So they, the message they gave, they gave a, numerous ones, but, but one of them that they gave is, hey, where I want to be is more important than where you want to be. And subsequently, I am more important than you, right? So now, now, and oftentimes we just have that immediate knee-jerk reaction and we don't think, wow, they just communicated a message. And that message is absolutely false. So we need to, as it's been said, take those thoughts captive. You know, uh, uh, somebody said once, they said, uh, you need to talk to yourself. Don't let yourself talk to you. <laughs> You know, we need to say, no, that's not true self. <laughs> that message that just came in, that's a false message. Who says so? Who are they to say anything about that? So those, um, those, those false messages, they never yield good results. We gotta, get, we gotta get to some better messages, right? And that's what the book was about. Um, the other thing I realized, uh, I had a very productive walk this morning, as you're going to tell. I was, I was thinking, I was reflecting on what we're going to be talking about today. And uh, something that my wife shared with me, I don't know, maybe it was like two years ago. Uh, and it was before I had the phone that I have now. And um, my, my phone was just going really slow and just couldn't hardly perform the functions I was asking of it. And uh, she said to me, she said, well, do you have any windows running in the background? Now, you can tell that I'm not very techy at all. And I was like, um, what does that even mean? <laughs> What's a window running in the background? And she said, well, here, click this button. And there were all these different windows open. And what happened is all those different windows that were open were draining strength, draining power from the thing I was trying to get accomplished. And I thought, wow, this is profound. I thought when we listen to things that aren't aligned with our purpose, with our immediate uh, goal, with the thing we need to be about, when we just hear bad reports and difficult things, it's not that we don't care. We're not, none of us on here, I don't think, are people who don't care, but it's like, they're not for me to deal with right now. And what can happen is emotionally and even mentally in the subconscious, they can become an open window that's running in the background that's draining strength from my day. That's, and you know, I think a lot of those things probably come out in dreams. That just occurs to me, those things. And often it's like, where did that come from? You know, I had this crazy dream, where did that come from? Well, we got windows running in the background all the time. So the more that we can go, okay, what am I here for? Find what our purpose is, you know, and put our skill set to, to the task of fulfilling that purpose and then go, okay, is, is this news, is this person, is this task, even good things, sometimes are not the best things. You, I'm sure you've heard uh, Jim Collins said it in his book, Good to Great, that the, the greatest enemy of the good is the best. And I think that's really true. Um, it, it doesn't get us where we need to be, right? And uh, uh, actually, this is interesting. I heard, I heard uh, got, met a friend out on my 
Marnie walks in. Uh, she, she's a professor and she, she told me, she said, well, my mom used to tell us that the greatest enemy of the good is the best. So for all you perfectionists out there, <laughs> if you're just always shooting for the best, you might miss out on something that's good because you're trying to make it so perfect. So that's just a little aside for the, for the perfectionist in the group. But uh, we have to pay attention to what windows are running in the background and what input. And uh, something that's happened uh, here in the last year or two, even with my wife and I, we're like, yeah, well, yeah, what are we watching the evening? You know, what, what are we putting in there? And what are the messages in what we're putting in? It may seem like a very benign, maybe a comedy or, or, or some sort of show. And it's like, what are the messages contained in this program? What am I putting in? What am I putting in? So we have to be very mindful about what we're putting in. How does it relate to who we are? And on the spiritual side, whose we are, and does it have anything to do with the price of tea in China about getting me toward my goal and to what I'm actually here to do? Does it help me? Does it help my family? Does it help those around me? Am I becoming more as a result of what's coming in? Uh, and, and we could talk about that on many levels, because again, you know, we're, we want to look at ourselves as holistic. So we're, we're spirit, we're intellect, we're soul, emotions, and we're also physical bodies. And uh, learning just more and more how important it is to put in the right things. Uh, you, you may have heard the, the, the old query, you know, if there's, there's a gray wolf and a red wolf fighting, which one's going to win? You know, and the, the, the answer, of course, is whichever one's fed the most. <laughs> You know, it's uh, so, so we have to ask if there's, if there's a, a, a bent in us to think about negative, to, to relate that. And then there's another side of us that doesn't want to do that. Which one of those sides are we feeding the most? Um, uh, a good friend of mine, she's a medical social worker. She, she said once, she said, uh, uh, most people that I run across want to do the right thing. But most of the time, they just need a little help to be moved in that direction, right? And we can, give, we can give a positive word. It, it doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to take all day. Um, uh, my wife and I were just talking about that this morning. Uh, she had an opportunity to just chat, uh, just text back and forth with a friend who was having a really rough day. And she was able to just, just text a few things that really changed that friend's day and really lifted her up. And uh, um, sometimes it only takes a few words. It doesn't have to be long. Like I said, it doesn't have to take all day. It doesn't have to be difficult. But, um, but we, as we're putting the right things in, we're more equipped to give the right things out uh, for ourselves and for those around us. Uh, and, and from the state of a lot of things I see, there's a, there's a lot of people that could use to put some more, some more good things in. So next thing I want to talk about is, is, is how, how do we bring in those right things? Okay, we've talked about the things not to bring in because uh, we don't want to end up being doom blast people. Um, so how do we bring in the right things? Um, well, one of the things we can do is just like my wife taught me on my phone, we can take control of the windows, you know, and be mindful of, okay, what windows are running in my background? You know, this, this takes a little time. Uh, you know, sometimes if we're just in the middle of, of a rush and constant obligation um, or constant commitment, even if it's not an obligation, uh, we may end up just having those windows open and never even be aware that they were there. Just like I was using my phone unaware that the windows were open and wondering why my phone was running so slow, right? So a lot of us were like, wow, wow, you know, we're wondering like, like, why aren't things working out for me? Why, why are things so difficult? Why, why, am I, why am I having so much trouble seeing the way? And a lot of times it's because um, we're just going so fast, we're not taking that time to reflect. Um, one, of my, one of my mentors is John Maxwell, and he likes to say that reflection turns experience into insight. Reflection turns experience into insight. We can just have the same experience over and over and over again and never learn a thing from it, right? Experience is not the best teacher. Evaluated experience is the best teacher because then we're like, oh, okay, I, I see what went wrong rather than going through the experience and never knowing what was right or wrong and then just repeating the same experience over and over. So we need that time to reflect. Um, and, uh, you know, what, one, of my, one of my favorite things to do is to get up early. Uh, uh, most mornings I'm, I'm up probably around 4.30, at least between 4 and 5. And, and, and I like to get outside. I love to be out pre-sunrise. Now, I know a lot of you are like, okay, see ya. I'm, I'm done, done there. It doesn't have to be pre-sunrise, but I tell you, I love to start the day with no other input coming in from anybody else, from media, from anybody. 
and just to get that time to be in a beautiful space. Uh, you know, and I, and I go out a lot of times and I'll, um, I'll just look up this morning. I went out and, and as I was, I know it's kind of overcast now in Norfolk, but, but this morning when I went out, it was clearer and, and the moon shining and Mars is just up from the moon and Venus is, is beating the sun up over on the Eastern horizon. And we got, you know, all, all kinds of, of just wonders there and the, and the rivers lapping on the shoreline and, and there's just, it's just still, it's quiet. It's peaceful, it's beautiful. And it's nice to have, I think it's essential to have, it's more than nice, it's essential to have some sort of space like that in our life where we can, we can minimize the noise in our own mind and, and, and just, just kind of enter into this, to this beauty that's around us that so often because of the way we think as people and what we create as a result, we don't have it in our lives. Uh, and it's neat to just look up and go, wow, this, you know, these same planets, these same stars, boy, you know, the ancient mariners um, charted their courses by it. They are steadfast. They are at peace. They are constant. They are reliable. They are beautiful. And all this stuff that's going on in my life, it's just a tiny speck, you know, in the universe. We're on this tiny little planet by universal standards. We're on this tiny little planet. And all this stuff is just stuff that came up largely because uh, somebody didn't believe the right things or do the right thing, right? And, uh, you know, that traces all the way back to Eden, to the Garden of Eden. I'm a person of faith, as you'll, you'll see, but uh, you know, all the way back to Eden, we didn't believe the right things. So then we did the wrong thing. And then we have set that in motion, you know? Um, so, so it's really important to have that time to be able to reflect and to pause and to not have anything going on there. And I don't mean nothing at all, like you have no thought, you know, we don't want that, but, but no input coming in. Um, one of the things, of course, that we can do to help, one of the big obvious things, we'll, we'll pick some low hanging fruit here, turn off the news, <laughs> turn off the news. I mean, I, I, I hours watch, I, I, I just can't imagine, you know, I, I probably get five minutes a day and, uh, you know, and if there's something I need to know about, I can, I can always, uh, you know, Google will have it as a trending search. And, uh, you know, I can find out pretty much everything I need to know about what's going on around me in five minutes. And then most of it doesn't have anything to do with me right at the moment or, or impact what I need to do that day. And then I can just get back to my day and go, okay, now let me put in what's going to help me, what's going to help me moving forward in this day. Um, uh, you, you know that stuff, and, and it will it will kill motivation, and it will kill those inspiration if if those if we let those thoughts go on. The another thing we can do is um, what I like to call turn down the dial of negative inner chatter. Anybody else? Uh, the, the one thing I really miss about doing live groups is that I can't ask for a show of hands and see everybody at once. But um, uh, other than that, I kind of love being able to do this. Um, but um, you, you know, anybody else? Uh, struggle with that inner chatter, that, that, that those voices that just kind of play. I mean, it's amazing how often I'll hear, I'll, I'll just, it's almost like I hear something. I don't literally hear something. I might have an auditory hallucinations, but um, you, you know, you know, have that thought that, oh, this isn't going to go well. I can, I can, I can, it's much easier to imagine a negative outcome than it is a positive. I caught myself feeling that way going into this this morning. I'm like, oh yeah, everybody knows all this. Nobody cares. I'm like, no, wait a minute. This is going to be a great time together. It's even if they know it, it's going to be positively reinforcing and uh, maybe they'll pick up something that, that's a good nugget or that they can pass on to somebody else. Uh, that's going to be a great time. Stop thinking that kind of stuff. You know, uh, um, I've got a friend, she's a coach up in Canada and she calls that, that uh, negative, the limiting beliefs, the negative inner chatter, that dialogue. She, call, she calls it a gremlin and she named hers George Burns. And uh, she, said, she said every time she gets ready to do something meaningful, he'll just start babbling. Oh, it's not going to work. They're not going to like it. You know, it's, and and, she, and she'll, she'll say, she said, now, George, I don't have time to talk to you today. You have to go sit in the corner because I got things to do. And then she'll just get about it and stop listening to that. But turning down that dial of the negative inner chatter, that's, that's so important. Um, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm currently uh, uh, studying uh, uh, for a brain health certificate, uh, to be a brain health uh, coach and getting the certification for that. And one of the things that we're coming across that's really helpful in brain health uh, is what they call ANTS. <laughs> and it stands for anti-negative thinking, right? And it's, uh, it, it's good to post these things around where you're going to see them. 
post them on your dash. I used to drive around. I uh, did a lot of driving back in the day when I, when I said I was working for Pizza Hut. I would write out positive thoughts or, or even, even uh, verses from the Bible. Sometimes I'd just tape them right to my dash and just look at them again. Well, not while I was you know, so much driving, but I just wanted them in front of me. You know? um, and, and, and it's helpful. I, I've got uh, uh, some friends and they, they post them on their bathroom mirror. They post them on, on their dressing mirror. They post them in the kitchen over where they make their coffee. And it's these anti-negative thoughts. It's positive things. Uh, we, we have to uh, affirm the positive. And now, now, like I told you, I'm a person of faith. And one of my favorite things to do once I get back from a walk in that early morning time is, is just to go and to, to put some, some super positive things from scripture in my mind. You know, actually, um, uh, if, if you're familiar with the books of the Bible, Ephesians is one of my favorite books. And uh, I love those. And, and there's, there's a first couple of chapters. And what I did is I, I went through and I broke it down. I actually took each, each phrase, each clause, and I made it into a personal affirmation statement. And wow, you talk about a game changer. I taught this to a group of guys and uh, over a year ago, and they still come, they're like, hey, hey, I've got that sheet you gave us. Uh, and they're like, man, I, I read it all the time. It, it's, it helped me through this, it's helped me through that, it's helped me through that, because now we got a big picture. When we're thinking about the negative, we're thinking about a small picture, right? We're, we, we, we've, got, we've got the binoculars in reverse. Right, we're, we're looking, we're, we're magnifying the small. And as you know, if you magnify the small enough, it can block out your view of everything. If you take a quarter and hold it close enough to your eye, it will blot out your view of the sun. The sun, if you don't know, is 333,000 times the size of the earth. It's enormous. Yet I can take this tiny thing and get it close enough to my vision and it'll block out my view of the sun. And that's amazing. And, and you probably know, you probably experienced it just like I have. If we have an issue and we dwell enough on the issue or a perceived issue, um, uh, I mean, uh, and a potential issue, you know, it may not even be a real thing. It's just, it's just that in our, in our mind, or maybe it's somewhere else that doesn't apply to us. And we get focused enough and close enough to those things. It'll block out our view of everything else. And we'll feel like, wow, this is all there is now. Now you got the seeds of depression being sown, right? because you're so close to, to, to a, a problem that you think is all there is that you can't see any way around it. You gotta step out of that. It's like a friend of mine uh, said that when, whenever she gets in a conflict, she says, okay, we, we, we gotta step out of the tornado. Step out of the tornado, get away from that thing. Step back, <sighs> take some time to breathe and to reflect and then to cut, if this issue's still there, come at it fresh, come at it with a little bit of renewal. I realized years ago that you know time is a great healer and a little bit of distance. Let everybody calm down, get de-escalated, you know, and that's a that's a huge that's a huge healer. Um, uh, the other other thing we want to do, like like I talked about, kind kind of with the scripture, is to to align as much as we can with the right truths and the right thinking. Um, and this is it's just priceless. And you you may not be a person of faith. You may not you may not read the Bible. You can always blow the dust off and. Uh, uh, start with Ephesians if you want, or um, but th there's a, a lot of other great works out there. There are great podcasts. Um, I do have one, but there's a lot out there that are great other than mine. But uh, uh, I do have one called Empowered Living with Jeff Bird, uh, and it's on uh, Apple, iHeart, Google, Spotify, a lot of major platforms. And I do that weekly. Been doing it for over two years. Uh, feel free to tune into that if you like. I'd love to have you. Um, but there's a lot of other good ones. A lot of great books. But just to take that time to slow down and say, okay, I'm going to step out of the tornado and I'm going to take this time for me. This is my time. Uh, you know, one of the most frustrating things I think that's come out of this season is that is, is not having personal time. There's so many needs, so, uh, so many things to think about. Um, uh, one friend of mine asked me to speak for her group and she, she said the, the main thing we're having trouble with is decision fatigue making so many decisions, so many decisions. Uh, but stepping out of that, out of that for a minute, go, okay, that decision doesn't have to be made right now. It can wait. When it, when it has to be made, things will be more clear. Uh, I have that faith. And I'm, I'm just going to take some time for me. But the disruptions too. Uh, if y'all are like me, one of, my, one of my, the biggest things that I struggle with and that tries my patience the most is being disrupt when I'm trying to move in a direction and a disruption comes in. Um, I used to work in a shop uh, uh, for a durable medical equipment company. And one of, my, one of the things that just got under my skin the most was I would be trying to do something, trying to 
fix somebody's wheelchair or something and the phone would ring and it was a whole new problem and I had to get my mind off of what I was supposed to be doing and wanted to be doing and completely wrap it around this whole nother set of things and you know then I had to get back and start all over to figure out where I was uh, uh, when I left off and figure out how to handle the incoming problem so the disruptions they they can be tough and these things make it so much more important to have that still time in order to reflect. Um, another thing, uh, another thing you can do, this is a fun thing, and this utilizes the technology very positively, is uh, this is another time if we were live at, or in person, I'd ask for a show of hands. But uh, uh, there's this cool thing that somebody turned me on to, and I can't remember who, but I owe them. It's called Google Alerts. Google Alerts. Uh, just go and Google it, uh, Google Alerts. And you can choose what topics you want to receive and with what frequency you would like to receive them and tell Google about it and it will scour the internet for these things and it will deliver them to you. So one of, one of my Google alerts is inspirational stories. I wanna hear some good news. So I created my own good news channel by doing a, setting a Google alert for inspirational stories. I look on, pos uh, on, on work culture, I work on leadership. I, you know, I've, I've got about five of them and every, I, I set mine for weekly, so every Sunday afternoon, these good thoughts, this good thinking, these good stories, they come in. And um, I don't always get to them, but every time I have, I've been glad I did. Um, and there are other things like that. Um, another thing that, that my wife and I do that's super cool, <laughs> we love this for a number of reasons I'll explain to you, is to keep a gratitude journal. Keeping a gratitude journal, and what we do is when we get together in the morning, when we sit down and we're having our morning coffee, uh, we think about the day before, or, or even the night before, and we think of everything that we're grateful for. Hey, did we get a good night's sleep? Did something good happen? We, we just look at the snapshots of all of what happened the day before and everything that we have to be grateful for. Now, some people I, I've told that to you, like, well, I don't have anything to be grateful for. I mean, they're, they're really in a difficult thing. And so what I always like to say is, well, start with listing everything that's not going wrong. <laughs> you may have a lot of things going wrong, but think about what's not going wrong for a minute. Does, does your electricity work? <laughs> uh, you know, do you have air conditioning? Do, do, you, do you have running water? Hey, I know people in a lot of countries, got some personal friends, they don't have running water. Okay, I mean, they're, they're hiking miles down to... Uh, what's well, probably an unclean water supply just to bring water back. You know, uh, uh, think about, yeah, I just looked this up the other day. Uh, uh, you know, th there's over 700 million people in the world who are living in extreme poverty, which according to the World Bank is making less than $1.90 per day. 700 million people in extreme poverty. Hey, there's a lot of people got it worse than we do. Think about what's not going wrong. Like Warren Buffett said, hey, if you were born in the US, you've already won the lottery. There was only a one in 50 chance of that happening. So, so you've already got it better right off the bat. Uh, I was down in Guatemala some years back and I had a, had a guy there, I was doing some bird watching and, and he said, he said, you know, the only problem with a lot of these people, he said, they're hard workers, they're diligent. The only problem with them is that they were born on the wrong latitude. So there's something to be grateful for. Grateful, be grateful that you were born on the right latitude. But the other thing that gratitude journal does is it helps us remember things. You know, and it's so cool. We, we've got a stack of them now. We can go back and sometimes we'll just go back and just open to a and list. Oh, wow, this was happening then. This is that good thing that happened. Uh, you know, back in the day, they, people would set up stones of remembrance. And they said, yeah, and, and they said, if your kids come and ask you, why are you setting up these stones of remembrance? Say it's so in future generations, when people, when somebody comes across this and says, hey, what are these stones for? We can remember and tell the story of the good things that happen. We need stones of remembrance. And um, here, here's a really cool thing about gratitude. Uh, I mentioned that I was uh, doing a brain health coaching certification. And, and in, in, in one of the um, sessions that I was doing, we were looking at a bunch of brain scans. Uh, they're called SPECT scans. There are different types of brain scans, but SPECT is really thorough. And um, we were looking at those and we were looking at, and then you can see where the brain is lit up. You can see where the activity is and where it's not, uh, which is very revealing. Um, and, and there were side by side, there was a brain that was dwelling on gratitude, under the influence of gratitude. And there was a brain that was under the influence of hate which of course is very negative. Um, and there's this little part of our brain, the, the, the big part that, that looks like a coral, which is why it's called brain coral, uh, the big part or a cauliflower, that, that big part, um, that's the cerebrum. 
And then in the back, there's this other little separate part that's called the cerebellum. It's very fascinating. It, and it doesn't look like the, the other big part. It, it has fine striated lines and it's very small. It's only 10% of the brain's mass of its size, but it contains 50% of the neurons in the brain, right? And in these scans, the one that was in a state of gratitude, that cerebellum was lit up like a firefly. I mean, you could see the energy and the activity in it. It, it, was, it was lit up like a Christmas tree, okay? The one that was under the influence of hate in a negative state, it was turned off. There was no activity shown at all. Think about that. If we let ourselves get to that really frustrated negative energy or, or hopefully not a hateful situation, but if we're going down that path, well, we're only operating with half a brain. You know, uh, we, we've, we've cut 50% of our capability based on the amount of neurons in our brain. We've just turned it off. Uh, and, and, and we know, we know uh, if any of you have seen the movie, What the Bleep Do We Know? And, and I'm not editing it. Um, it was, uh, that's actually the name of it, What the Bleep Do We Know? Uh, uh, they, they had some work by Dr. Emoto uh, where he would take water and photograph it under a dark light microscope. And the water that was under the, just the water that was under the influence of positive words or even positive sayings like, like the chi of love taped on the outside of the bottle. They took on these beautiful patterns, almost like snowflakes. And the ones that had negative things like, I hate you, I'm gonna kill you. They were just like really oily looking blobs, no, no beauty to it. So, so the gratitude and the beautiful things that we speak actually change the essence of who we are because we're, we're, we're what I think it's 90 something percent water or at least 80s we're this huge part of water so if, if what we say and think and feel can affect water on that level how does it affect us and how does what we're putting in affect us and then in turn affect what we're putting out which then in turn affects other people so I love that. And, uh, you, you know, a lot of times that effect on other people can just be a very simple thing. Uh, this is a great story. I, I just, I love this. A couple of years ago, my wife and I were uh, near the end of the season. We found some gardenia plants. There was a really good deal on them. And I love gardenias. Uh, and so we bought a number of them and we planted them around our yard. Well, it took them a little while to take hold and to get going. But this, this year, June was their month, let me tell you. Um, and uh, they had grown a lot and they were just covered with buds. The fragrance in my opinion, it's just otherworldly. It's like, like a heavenly fragrance just wafting down. And uh, we, we had our house filled with it and uh, it was just beautiful. But uh, my wife had the idea to share that with the neighbors. And uh, we had gotten some, some little uh, uh, colored bases. They were, they were really beautiful. We found them at a yard sale. I don't know, they were like 50 cents a piece or something. Uh, and she went and uh, took the vases, filled them with water and cut, cut some gardenias, put a gardenia or two in each one and went around and set them on our neighbor's porches. Well, you, you know what that, brighten some other people say it wasn't hard wasn't expensive didn't take long right but um she she went she went out there and uh, and did that and then you know what we had some neighbors right across the street from us that that don't speak much they would pop right out of their car and go straight in their house and never wave never notice us anything well what do you know a week or so later they were like oh hey calling us by name how you doing you know it brightened the day and with this small little thing so the better thoughts we have in and the more they're outside of us, the better it's going to be. It's, it's, it's just going to be going to be great. And um, so, but it all starts with what we're putting in. And, um, you know, so often uh, when we think about the, all this change is needed in the world, I, th I think, I think of the quote by Mahatma Gandhi that said, be the change you want to see in the world. And often we think, well, how can I do that? It's like anything. How do you climb Mount Everest? One step at a time one good thought, one good action at a time is how we change the world. And, and here's the thing, if you get enough good thinking in that you, you're not just scraping the bottom of the emotional barrel to try to, to try to stay afloat, but you actually have a little bit in reserve to give, you're not gonna give to another person without being built up yourself. Um, Solomon said thousands of years ago, he said, he wrote, and it's still just as true today as it was then, he who refreshes another will himself be refreshed, right? It, it's, it's just true, it just doesn't change. You know, there's never gonna be a time when that's not the truth. And uh, one last story, and then we'll, uh, we'll uh, go to some question and answer if there's, if there's any out there. Um, this is a story that I love. Um, my, wife, my wife loves veterans. 
And uh, I, this is another thing I'd love to do if we were in person is ask for a show of hands how many vets we got. And uh, if we were in person, my wife would be coming right for you. She'd be coming up. And if COVID wasn't around, she'd be hugging you and shaking your hand and thanking you for your service to our country, which I do as well right now. So thank you if that applies to anybody on this call. Um, but uh, uh, what will happen is anytime she sees somebody in a vet's hat, I, I know the next thing that's going to happen. I can just stop talking to her then because she's not going to be paying attention. She's going to be going over to thank that veteran. And uh, uh, sometimes I'll be like pushing a cart through a, through a grocery store or Costco or something. And, and I'm just chatting along randomly looking around at them. Then I'll notice, hey, I'm talking to the air. There's nobody here. And uh, it's because she saw somebody with a veteran's hat on halfway across the store. And she, she's making a beeline over to them to thank them for their service to a country. Well, one time she had an experience. Um, I wasn't there this time, but uh, she saw a man uh, in a Vietnam veteran's hat. And he had a young child with him, maybe five or six years old. And uh, she went over and uh, uh, this time she leaned down to the child first. And she said, she said, hey, did, did you know that your grandpa is a hero? And he looked up at his grandpa and said, really, grandpa, you're a hero? And when she looked up at the veteran, he had tears streaming down his face. And he said, in all these years, it had been decades since he had been back. He said, nobody has ever said that to me before. I tell you, it was right under the surface. Those emotions are right there. Uh, it's been said that any emotion that gets buried is buried alive. And all it takes is the one thing to, to bring it up for better or for worse. But hey, in this situation, she expressed gratitude to him because she, she knew, not in detail, but she knew that he had done a service for all of us. And she expressed gratitude and immediately she brought those emotions up, positive, beautiful, healing emotion up. And here's the thing. I say that to say this, that don't you know that both of them walked out of that store about six feet off the ground? <laughs> you know, it was when she did that for him, she didn't just make his day. She made her day as well. She made her day because she made his day. Right. And that's just the way it works. And um, so uh, I, I hope that this has been valuable to you. Uh, it's, it's, it's always valuable to me to even share these things and I think it will be to you as if you got a nugget here that, that uh, you can take away and uh, share with somebody else or just, just think on today. I hope that it'll build your day and I hope it'll enable you to more effectively build the days of the people around you. Um, so uh, again, thank, thank you for having me here. Thank you, Micah, for setting this up, man. Really appreciate you and what you're doing. And I can tell by the number of people on the call, um, th these, these Fridays uh, are, are important to people. And obviously people are getting something out of them because just in a very short period of time, it started small and it grew big. And that's just the way it works. Uh, so, so thank you for having the idea and doing something about it and adding value to all of us. And um, uh, that's all I've got for you. Um, uh, so. Back to you, my friend. All right. So uh, that was amazing. Oops. Oh. Uh, that was amazing. Uh, thank you, Jeff. I know that the chat has been blowing up with oh, wow. uh, positive feedback. So if you want us to take a few minutes to look through those, wow. but I know everybody's been feeling uh, inspired. And what better way to get inspired on the eve of the weekend? You know, because now we can go into Saturday and Sunday and just feel really energized and wanting to make a difference um, and get inspired by the end of the week. So. For those that are sharing their screen so we can see your wonderful faces, does anybody have any questions or some feedback to our dear friend, uh, Jeff, for his presentation? Anything? I'm looking. Tish, you came unmuted. Is that a reason why? Okay, she's shaking her head. No. So does anybody have any hands raised? Any questions or thoughts? For those that are not sharing your screen, there's a reactions button. You can raise your hand if you want. Uh, if that would be better. Um, I, you know, I don't want to hold you tied up at all, but this is some great information. Those that are on the call, um, we have a few people on the call, 757-773-4269. Uh, Do you have any questions? You are unmuted. Oh, no, I don't have any right now. Thank you. Okay. Well, who is this again? This is April. My name's at the very bottom. I got on late. <laughs> okay, no worries. Thank you so much. Thank you, April. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, let me go to another uh, phone call. Leslie Bell, did you have anything you wanted to share? I don't want to leave anybody out. Leslie? Okay, she is driving, so we are not going to interrupt her while she's driving. Uh, I don't want to be the cause of anything happening there. <laughs> 
Um, anybody else? Does anybody, nobody have uh, any questions? Okay, hi, there we hello. go, Annette. Hi. Um, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Bird. It, it, very, very, um, I don't know, just calming to listen to you. Uh, I do turn off the news a lot because, as you said, there's so much negativity on the news and you can get it easily by doing Google Alerts or searches. Um, but I go to a lot of seminars and they're sales seminars that many times are often mix with energizing things because in that business as well as many other business is it's about keeping your energy up you know not dealing with any negativity that can come in you have to deal with it but you have to be able to i guess compartmentalize it and kind of like you know move on past it you know this too will change and i just want to say thank you so much uh for what you're doing i did go to a, a tony robbins uh event where you walk on fire and you know everybody's like oh you know that's great i want to do that but the purpose of it isn't showing that you could walk on uh fire like the hot coals the purpose is to get your mind into a state and so what you've been doing here is showing us how to get our mind into the proper state so that we can you know focus on what we want and so thank you so much for doing that Ma, you are so welcome. Hey, it, again, it makes my day to, to, to help out that way. And um, thank you, Annette. I appreciate those comments. And uh, um, hey, Micah, I noticed um, I was, I was, uh, I'd been scrolling through the chats a little bit, and somebody had asked if I could share that list that I said I made of those affirmations from Scripture. If I email that to you, are, do you have all these emails? Are you able to get it out to well, if you want, um, if you want, I know Jeff does some um, inspirational things. So those of you, when I send my email out after this call, um, Jeff, you'll have all their emails as well. So if you want to be on Jeff's list or want to reach out to him, he can share that with you, um, you know, and kind of go in from there if that helps. Um, anybody else have anything? This has been a quiet group. Hi. Uh, my oh, name yes, is Edna. Edna. Go ahead, Miss Edna. Hello, hello everyone. I'm I'm new to your your group, but I found the topic uh, fascinating. We're challenged to stay in touch with with family and friends, and we probably want to do so even more so now. But one of the things I found is that sometimes with certain friends, we we get into these very long, very deep discussions, and I found myself feeling a little drained <laughs> just from certain certain conversations. So, um, and, and in some cases I've got friends who I've known for years, but I know a two, two hour talk about uh, politics and the virus is just too much. So I found myself limiting my conversations. Maybe instead of thinking in terms of just a free for all, I'm gonna have a half an hour discussion with this person and then I'm gonna invent, invent a reason to move on. <laughs> But I, I was hoping that you would address that because, we, well, again, we, we're challenged to just stay in touch with people now. And everyone wants to talk and share. A, a true story. <laughs> and uh, I, I think you kind of gave the answer right there w within the question. Um, and that is you said that you limited it because uh, that's true. I mean, and, and again, I, I wish we could ask for a show of hands in a group with everybody together. But I mean, how many of us, you, you know, have those friends? I mean, I know I've got them. And, and, and good heavens, I mean, they, they can talk the wallpaper off the wall. You know, it's, uh, it's uh, about difficult things. I mean, it's just, it's really challenging. And if you're going away, and it doesn't mean you don't love them, and it doesn't mean you don't care. Limiting it does not mean that. It means that you, you can't give what you don't have. And if you aren't taking the time and limiting those things that drain you, you're not going to have something really good to give. If you're, if you're on a call uh, or uh, with a friend or talking to them, maybe in person, and, and you're just like, wow, I just can't wait for this to end. How am I going to get off this phone? You, you know, and uh, having dinner ready is always good. Uh, you, know, it's, um, you know, there's a lot of things. But yeah, having that list of things that, that can get you out of that or, or just setting a parameter to start with. Um, you, know, when, when, uh, uh, you know, when we do coaching calls, you know, we, we define the parameter on that. You know, and, and the thing is, we can do it with the people in our lives, too. And uh, I mean, even people that you love, you can say, hey, hey, listen, I just, 
I, I need some time today. I, I, I need some time. I, I've been I've been super busy, been a little inundated, overwhelmed, and and I just need the time. And uh, love you to death, but I'm going to be so much better as a result of having done this. And uh, you know, just let them know. And uh, I don't I don't mind. I mean, I know people who who they're afraid to tell anybody like that because they don't want them to think ill of them or something or or possibly reject them. But I think it's doing them a favor when you just tell them the truth straight up, and and define those parameters and how much time you've got. Um, uh, I have calls with other coaches sometimes, and and uh, one, one of my been a friend since kindergarten. And she'll tell me right up front. She goes, "Hey, I only have a half hour. Uh, I got I got something else to do." After that, and I'm like, "Okay, cool." And I know right up front. I'm not offended that she has other things to do, or even if she needs time. Uh, you know, I'm just I'm glad to know, and then we just keep it to that, and we're good to go. So, so I think I think you're doing exactly the right thing. You know, taking the time for yourself. Say no when you need to, but set that parameter and and give people the context of of why you're having to do that, so that they'll understand and not take it personally. Mm-hmm. And thank you for also mentioning the importance of a a gratitude uh, journal. I'm finding that to be incredible. Right, right, isn't it? And then you can go back on it years later when you've forgotten what happened in those individual days and go, oh my gosh, this wonderful thing happened. I remember that. And you can can have gratitude all over again. (laughs) This is great feedback, great information. I'm glad everybody got it. Um, Does anybody else have any questions? Mike, I see, I, I see one that Cheryl Slavinsky, uh, but she wanted me to repeat the John Maxwell quote. quote. So it's a, it's a reflection turns experience into insight. We can, have that, we can have the same experiences over and over and never gain any insight. But if we take the time to reflect and ask the meaningful questions, reflection turns experience into insight. Thank you. You are very welcome. That makes so much sense. One at a time. Hold on, Kim. Kim. I love that. That makes so much sense. We have Tipa Snow coming on um, in a few weeks, thanks to Micah, right? And mm-hmm. the sponsor. And her AELC is Adult Learning Cycle. She will give you an experience, ask you to think about it, process it, and then discuss it. It's that time to reflect and process, which we have hopefully more of now. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. And next. Jeff, um, I tried to look up the Empowered uh, Living app on my iPhone. Is it an app? Am I looking somewhere else? Yeah, it, it's not an app. Um, you can either look on, uh, and it's Empowered Living with Jeff Bird. There's a bunch of Empowered Living, so it's important to do okay. the whole thing. But um, yeah, it's not an app. It's just on a lot of those uh, podcast platforms. It's on iHeart is the one I usually go to, Spotify, Spreaker, Apple. Um, but it's, for example, if you just go to iHeart and type in iHeart Empowered Living with Jeff Bird, it should pop right up. That's how I do it when I share it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, you bet. Anybody else? Any other questions? I'm going to stop recording here in just um, like now.